In May of last year, Spain announced its intention to trial a system of universal basic income. What is universal basic income, or UBI for short? Universal basic income is generally defined as a system whereby the government pays everybody an equal amount of money, regardless of income, state of employment, age, gender, or marital status. This amount is supposed to be equivalent to something somebody could live off. Thus, UBI supposedly eradicates absolute poverty by creating an economic floor below which nobody can fall. In this video, we're going to find out how exactly UBI works and where the money comes from. Also, why it's useful, especially in the wake of the COVID epidemic and a precarious job market. And finally, we'll learn about some of the criticisms of UBI. But first, why don't you like this video and hit the subscribe button for more great content. Universal basic income has only been tried in a few countries, so there isn't a set way of doing it or a rule book yet. For example, although not the same, Alaska has a system whereby it pays all adults a flat sum of money every year. Money which comes from profits from the oil industry. Elsewhere, in the United States in 1969, President Richard Nixon pushed for a similar policy in which families were paid a set amount that was enough to live on. But for a fully universal system in which every single person was paid, questions abound as to where the money would come from. One way it could be paid for is by diverting money that currently goes to tax cuts. But realistically, universal basic income would have to come at the cost of services the government provides, like education and welfare. Otherwise, government spending and resulting in taxes would have to increase. Take this hypothetical. If you were to give 10 grand a year to just the adults in the US, that amounts to 200 million people and it would cost $2 trillion. The US Bureau of Economic Analysis estimates that US public spending was $7.3 trillion in 2019. So if you were to add in UBI, that would increase spending and taxes by over 25%. The next question to ask is why UBI is becoming more popular. I think there are three main reasons for this increase in popularity. Firstly, the nature of the current job market, which is reliant on unstable, unskilled service sector jobs. Secondly, due to the argument that our current system of welfare means testing is unfair and often coercive. A third reason focuses on the benefits of UBI in giving people more freedom economically. Proponents of UBI argue that it does this by raising everybody above the poverty line. People's wages are essentially topped up, meaning they can, for example, care for elderly relatives, women are freed from abusive relationships, etc. People switching or searching for new jobs would also be free from the financial hardships of unemployment, as would those retraining. Secondly, Many have argued that in the wake of COVID-19 and high unemployment, people need a system to fall back on. The fact is, in our modern service economy, almost every job is unstable and insecure, and at risk of automation. Expecting the market to simply give everybody a job is simply not good enough. Moreover, it is naive to think that governments can spend money trying to resurrect dying or dead industries. The unstable job market also shows us that our current conception of people as either hard workers or scroungers is outdated, and it's precisely this ideology which informs the current welfare systems in most countries. This ideology is a leftover of the archaic poor law system that sent the quote, undeserving poor to the workhouse, whilst those quote, deserving of help were sent into the hands of churches and private charities. Because this ideology persists, most welfare systems are means tested, meaning they require the weakest in society to prove they are deserving of support. For people in wheelchairs to prove they are disabled, and those starving to prove that they are actually hungry, and so on. In the final part of this video, we're going to look at some of the criticisms of UBI. For me, these tend to fall into two categories. Firstly, you've got criticisms of the principle behind UBI, and secondly, the argument that money could be better spent. Opponents of UBI argue that it would incentivize people to work less, meaning the benefits that people get from having their incomes topped up would be nullified because they would work less anyway. This explains why most political parties oppose UBI. They think people should work and fear that the floor created by UBI would soon become a ceiling. People would simply work enough to get by. 
or refuse to do lower skilled jobs. That being said, Finland recently did a trial of universal basic income and found that more people on the basic income worked and resultantly made more money than those not on it. Although to be fair, the methods were somewhat criticised. There is also the issue of UBI's universality. Opponents ask whether we really want to give money to alcoholics, drug addicts, or even children. This leads to the argument that money could be better spent, creating universal services like free education, healthcare, etc. Surely, opponents of UBI ask, it is better to target the poor and those who would need more than the UBI amount, say the extremely disabled, to pay for operations. UBI also does nothing to deal with inequality. In fact, it arguably perpetuates it by giving the rich more money than they need. Okay, so that's UBI explained. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.